<laughs> hey, welcome back for another episode of More, More to, to the, the Story. story. Be, 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 be. Hey, that's enough. So my Girl, name's Farron Moore. <laughs> I am Farron Moore. Who are you? Hey, what up? I'm Tahir Moore. You already know what a whole lot of gang Stop. activity. And today we have Miss Mel Mitchell Little in the, in the house. house. Hey, hey, hey guys. Hey, hey, Mel is that? so grown and so like innocent at the same right? time. She posted those pictures from Disneyland. She had on a Princess Tiana. A shirt she had on a tiara. <laughs> she had a little clutch or purse on it. I was like, look a little sister out here just living right. life. You give strong like little sister vibes. Though. Oh, I am like, little sister. I'm the youngest sibling. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, because I definitely. I was get so that. excited mm-hmm. <laughs> to go to Disneyland. I got the t- they are black owned Tiana ears that are mm-hmm. sold at Disneyland. Oh. Very excited about that. I had the shirt from Target, and then they were giving out those purses at yeah. Essence. It was just like God put that outfit together for me. <laughs> God, and I was, what but now I will say, Disneyland was very underwhelming as yes. a Florida as a Florida resident. Mm, um, mm-hmm. I was like, "Where's the rest of it? The castle is my height." Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we got stuck on a ride. I saw that. Oh, a ride that you had put your really? name on at four p.m. One. One p.m. So it was like a Jordan release. Apparently, like I tried to follow. I follow a couple of Disney adults so I can know the game. So you had to put your name on the list to get on the fucking ride mm-hmm. at 1 p.m. So I'm at 12.59 with the app, the Disneyland app open. Like, as soon as the clock turned one, I was like, ooh, to get on the fucking Minnie Mouse ride. Mm-hmm. And I was in group 200 and something. They didn't tell me I could get back on the ride until 8 p.m. Wow. So we walked all the way back over to that bitch and got on the ride, and then it cuts off mid-ride. I have a scathing TikTok I'm posting later on today. <laughs> Scathing. Yeah. It was so funny because we were the only black people on the ride. Mm. Damn near in the park. We counted 10 fully black families that entire day. Yeah. We went to both parks. Wow. And Most I of was... the black people in LA have been there and we tell other people don't go. Can I ask a question? Yeah. So Disney adults, is that like what you call yourself yourselves? Like oh, no, I'm yourself? nowhere near Disney adult level. These, these are people with I have annual never passes. heard of that. They don't fucking play by Disney. They have been to every park, every ride. They can tell you everything about it. They have the outfits. They have little Disney adult communities. Mm-hmm. Wow. I follow a couple of black girl Disney adults and they go to Disney like weekly. They, um, okay. they, cause it's only one place in Disney that sells alcohol, but you have to be invited to that place. It's kind of like Magic Oh yeah. yeah. And, so, the, and the waiting list is like years long. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's intense. Like I'm it's nowhere crazy. near, I was just asking cause I didn't want to like, hey girl, I'm going to Disneyland. What do I need to know? Cause it's, it's another queue where you got to be on there at 7 a.m. to get in line. And if you miss the 7 a.m., then you got to do the 1 p.m. So those rides are crazy. Luckily, one of my supporters, she sent me free Disney tickets to any resort in the world. Oh, wow. And I've already been to Paris. I didn't plan on going to Asia anytime soon. Of course, I've been to Florida. So I was like, let me go to L.A. And mm-hmm. then I can just do that. And then I bought the Fast Pass. So mm-hmm. this is why you can just make a reservation to come. Okay, I'm going to come back to this ride at 5. So I ain't got to wait in line. Right. And that was worth the money. Yeah. Because I had a good time. It was fun, though. <laughs> yeah. Good. But um, I don't know. I'll go again for free, but it, was, <laughs> it ain't Disney World. I see why he got all that land out there in Disney World because it's a whole. It's really it's a, world. a different experience. Have you been to I haven't. Oh my god! I've been since I want to go a, not since so I was a kid, bad. Okay, so this is the one I was looking for. Disney is offering a hundred and ten thousand dollar U.S. dollar private jet, excuse me private jet trip to every Disney park in the world. So you pay a hundred and ten thousand dollars and you get to go to every Disney park in the world. So Orlando, wow. you go to LA, you go to a Paris, you go to the one in it's Japan, right? Japan, and they have Shanghai and Hong Kong, apparently. I forgot about oh. that. Wow. So you get to go to all of those for $110,000. I am so impressed that you even know that all these exist. I had no clue. It's I was a like, whole, there's I'm a nerd and, and like LA. low-key white woman. <laughs> Because of my upbringing. I mm-hmm. grew up in Florida around a lot of, like, white adjacent people. So. You also go to a lot of parks. You go to Church Park. What was it? Gospel Park? Gospel Adventure It's called Land. Holy Land. <laughs> what? Again, I'm from Florida. So, like, when I say <laughs> weird shit, you just have to understand that I am from Florida. And then I'm also a pastor's kid. And they opened the worst place ever in, like, around 99, 2000. It's called Holy Land. In mm-hmm. Orlando, where, like, actual Mickey Mouse and Universal and all these fun things are, it was a Christian theme park called Holy Land. In Orlando, Florida. There were no rides. They had a tomb. There was a passion play. You see the crucifixion live. They have some white man bloodied up every day around two. They do the full shebang every day. 
If Ma'am. I, as an eight year old, was forced to go there with my parents and my sister, and if that wasn't bad enough, they made me and my sister dress alike, and we are seven years apart. It was the worst experience. What? what? It was so bad. It was <laughs> yo. If they're not one ride, there's literally oh, just like what is fun about a live this? action Israel in in Bethlehem in Jerusalem <laughs> in Orlando, Florida. It is the worst place ever. Oh I'm so my glad God. they closed it. It did not survive the pandemic. Oh, that would have put um, me off Jesus. Like yes, what? The Holy Land experience by TBN. Yes, TBN will pay for their crimes. It was. Oh, it was. Yo. It was really bad. That, yeah. Oh, I remember those Met, TBN days. God. Mel told us that story in the green room, and we were like, no, wait, what? what is the real name of the park? And she was <sighs> like, Holy Land. Wow. She showed us pictures. She had oh pictures my God. from Holy Land. There are photographs, and I was disgruntled. At, at <laughs> because I knew I was like, to it's... say the least, child. <laughs> she walking around like, I mean, I'm going to blow this place up. <laughs> no, honestly, like, oh my they God. made me go there. And I learned nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds, yeah. Somebody she said, said it was, sounds traumatized. It was. Yes. white man coming out every day at 2 p.m. Just walking. Just the, the holes carrying in his the hands. Cross. Carrying People the cross. People being there shouting and excited. I'm like, bro, this is not fun. I'm a kid. You walk in uh. Jesus. You walk that cross. <laughs> Come on, keep up near it. Imagine auditioning <laughs> for Holy Land Jesus. I can't even, like, my brain not is like, rejecting this whole thing. Florida like, is not I a real re- place. Like, I refuse to think that this is real. <laughs> my brain is like, on no, for years. It a- just closed. It just closed. Oh, my yeah. God. I hate that so much As for a Florida you. <laughs> church kid, it just... But I tell you what, uh, me and Mel okay. be kicking it on the road, because we damn sure yes. went to that... Uh, Uncle Nearest tour with her home girl. We had girls. a good time. We had a good time. Her home girl. I, I could tell the age gap <laughs> between me and her friends. A good time. And then there was another age gap with my friends' for. friends. They was even younger. So we, us older 20s, early 30s, looking at the like 23, 25, like, when shut I, the fuck up. It was a <laughs> really? whole club on the bus because it was about an hour and change ride. Oh and God. they had that music blasting from beginning. To, I thought they were going to blow the speaker. Now, her homeboy, one of the homeboys on the way back, he was DJing. Nah, that motherfucker did his thing. Lit. That was lit. He, he was playing the Going R&B the way and there, shit. Like... It was all a money bag, yo, and yeah. the NBA young boys. And I was like, this is going to be a very long day. And I would tell you what, when he we first started off, though. He was a little um, but... reluctant. Like, he told me, he was like, ah, I'm going to be on this tour. And I'm like, oh, you got a nice time. Relax. Once he got on it, I didn't hear from him anymore. I was like, oh, he is living his absolute It was a party best bus. Life. Strobe lights. <laughs> Uh uh-huh. It was a good time. It was yeah. a good time. It, yes, I could tell. But what was you about to say? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You were turning into me. Do you realize that? Yeah. You used to be able to like hold on what to it saying? and come back. Yeah, I can't do it no more. I'm tired, <laughs> child. You tired, I'm child. tired, child. Okay, I'm sorry. Mel, I'm happy you're here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here, man. We wanted Mel to yeah. come over last night. We got tired. I, it was 9.30. I'm like... Cause we were, I don't, I didn't explain fully in the text message. That's probably my fault. So yeah. I was saying we were at, we went to Cavatina in Hollywood, and then uh-huh. we were going. To, so we saw. I was like, dang, I really want some cake. All the um, desserts are nasty. Yeah. So we went to Cheesecake by Y'all in okay. Glendale, and then we were going to go to Y'all. Yeah. But by the time we walking to get the ch- cake, you was like, ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cause and you were saying, like, well, you saying we're 15 from you. I was like, oh, they must be at there. They you must thought we were 15 there. around at that time. Yes. I, when I reread the message, I was like, oh, they I thought I was coming the parking, right then. I, parked, I sat in the parking lot waiting for y'all so I wouldn't have yeah, to walk back sure up. Did. I was oh, down there, I was waiting. I was like, all right, cool. And I walked up there, still nothing. I was like, well, like if I'm, I'm going to hit her up. See, she ain't... She ain't close to like five minutes away. I'm gonna just tell her we, I had you was like, yeah, we in line for cheesecake. All right, but this is what we finna do. <laughs> we finna lay it down. Okay. You know, and that's okay. I was like, <laughs> you know what? We went home. We, we, we you needed to sleep. Redacted. We didn't go to sleep. We watched trans uh, not Transformers, uh Terminator. I had Ooh. never seen the Terminator before. The original one? The original, like the oh, 1984 okay. OG. I saw mm. the third one in theaters because I think it came around my dad's birthday, mm. like whatever year that was, like 2003 mm. or four, whatever. Yeah. So I seen that one, but I never really know I was watching. I was also like nine, so yeah. I didn't really care. <laughs> the CGI, I wouldn't even call it CGI. The graphics. The graphics yeah. were so bad. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that was good back then. And that yep. was good. good they were like, then. "Oh my yeah. god, this is." Tech-. I was like, "They that's was losing yeah. mind." That's the thing for part. Star Wars too. Yeah, trying to watch <laughs> your old favorite films now is difficult to, yeah. to appreciate it because the clarity of the graphics. and everything, Ooh. the quality, yeah, the, the robot puppet, and then like when he had the <laughs> robot eye, you could tell it's clearly a mask. Yeah, and right. I'm not even the thing is like. This- He's spitting like this is amazing. This shit crazy. I feel the same way when I think back to Chucky too. Like mm. looking at old photos and clips and stuff of we Chucky movies, and I was like, mm-hmm. "So we was we was scared of this? <laughs> like, <laughs> Very much scared. I, I mean, terrified as yeah. you go home from movies. Terrified. Yes. All right, child. <laughs> okay, child. Hey, <Okay>, child. <laughs> mm. So, um, Mel, how the hell have you been? How was your Valentine's? Good. It was Did really you celebrate? good. I, I celebrated. Um, me and that boy had a good time. You know, we working on things. Damn. This was the, the hoorah. They, mm-hmm. they, you know, they had an intervention about me and that boy in, in Nashville. <laughs> I, told, I, told, I was like, Mel got the real Kev this weekend. Because Kev, Kev, Kev will coddle people, and then he will just, he will out the blue just give you the real Kev. I, you was, like, a, I was attacked <laughs> at Slim and Huskies in Nashville. <laughs> <laughs> the things they were saying were not things that I didn't already think myself, so I was like, they right, they confirmed what I already mm-hmm. knew. So, mm-hmm. like, we're on, me and that boy are on a break, you know, mm-hmm. this was like the official last hoorah, mm-hmm. and okay. that made me sad. So, okay. but I listened. Well, we can do some um, drugs tonight if you want. This motherfucker. I'm doing. I'm Yo, doing. Rob. Rob. I'm sorry. Tonight. Rob has a room tonight at uh Motherland something Motherland and some kind of. Something. Oh okay. But drugs can be done. Um, <laughs> no, I I had some edibles the other day and I could. The thing about being high is you remember everything. So I could in real time, like my high self and my regular self was fighting in my brain and yeah. I could hear my high self talking. My real self was like this is ridiculous, but I was like, nah. Yes. Is this even a oh real him? God. Nah, cause y'all nah. Cause I did. It got really Kanisha. weird. It got really weird, and I was like, I need to lay off the drugs. Yeah. I did that to Kanisha before. She smoked with me, and she was like, she just was so self-conscious of everything she was doing, because she felt like she was doing too much. And I was like, you have literally done nothing that you would not have done if you were sober. I've said something that I haven't already said, because I say it so loud in my mind when I smoke. (laughs) I was like, damn, did I say that aloud or did I say that just to myself? You just don't remember. Because you don't remember. So but you're like aware that you're tripping. Yeah. But you're still actively tripping. Yeah. And we were in Roscoe's because, like, that was this, that boy's first time in LA. So I'm like, okay, we got to be tourists and go to Roscoe's. Yeah. Like, that's the LA, you know, right of passage. Mm-hmm. And I'm just sitting here looking at the waffle, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm there, close in on it. Get in. And I'm then just I was <laughs> and then I started staring at him like, this is not even a real nigga. Uh, this is a clone. They done sent some fucking clone to LA. Ooh, this is not the fucking real him. Oh, it man. got really weird. On time I got high got and weird. I had an existential conversation with the kid. And oh my god. This was because she she has these conversations when she's just she's sober, right? She's a kid. Yeah, so I was like, it. I was like, what if our whole world are just different versions of us, right? Everybody you meet is a different version of you, mm-hmm. right? And that version of you is the version of you that went right when you went left or did two lefts when you did two rights or something like that. So in one, in one, on one side, it's amazing because you're Michael Jordan, you're Michael Jackson, you're Einstein, you're Thomas Edison, you're all of that. But in the same thought, you're also Jeffrey Dahmer. You're also the DC sniper. You're also uh, what's the guy that took all the money in New York? Uh, oh, Madoff. Madoff. You're all these horrible people. They're just different all, versions all of at the you, same time. Mm. all in 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 your world, and it's like on some Matrix shit. So does that mean that like I mean, because if you think about that, it, it makes. Basically, it makes you the center of a universe. Mm -hmm. So are you saying in every universe is just a different person, Mm -hmm. but it's just full of different versions of that person? Yes. And that's why when you meet somebody, in in this theory, when you meet somebody and it feels like you've known them. familiar. It feels super familiar or like you feel like that's your soulmate, even if they're like a different sex. That's the closest version of you. Like, you guys are only off by a couple turns. How does that account for the age differences then? Well, the age difference is, that is just a component of the world. Like, because everybody can't be the same age. 
maybe mm-hmm. everyone has different like starting points. Yeah, mm-hmm. or, but it's or, all still the same being. Yes, or it could be reincarnation. So mm-hmm. like an There's older version of you, and yeah, and yes, it just again. keeps up with up. See, so all the new babies mm-hmm. born are still you, and they're taking that same path with you. Oh, so that means through this whole thing, everybody just you just fucking you a whole lot. It's masturbation. Yeah, a lot of masturbation, a lot mm. of self love. <laughs> my theory is more like the Truman Show and I thought this before I saw the Truman Show when I saw it I was like so everyone thinks that Yo. I'm the main character and yeah. like now that I'm in this room nothing outside of this room exists because I'm in here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but things start to exist as I move to different areas because I'm yeah. the main character and that yeah. everybody is just here for me mm-hmm. Yeah. and then my other I came up this when I was a kid this is how I know kids be doing dumb shit because kids <laughs> be high just naturally like you said right my theory is that God is God Right, Mm -hmm. but we're God's project, like a school project. Mm -hmm. Like God is like, this is Earth, and these are the human beings, and then I have hell, and I have heaven, and these these are my people. But like Blee Borpnim and Galaxy Two Seven Nine Four (laughs) Three, they got a different God than us. God did our God didn't make Blee Borp. And so then, it's all the guys at a science experiment. They had a science experiment. <laughs> right. Everybody, is, everybody science yeah, fair. we are science fair We're projects. Like legit and, diorama. And God is our student. We are God's science fair project. <sighs> but Blee Borp has another God, yeah. and that's who they worship. Because I feel like God would be overwhelmed with like all everything in the entire universe. Mm. I think they kind of like to like divvy up some of the like gods. Mm. Okay. Mm. And we we are his creation made in his image. But again, Blee Borp is made in like Blee Borp God's image. Yeah. And that's why they got whatever they got going on. You know, know what's crazy is that it wasn't until recently where I would see those, 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 um, those pictures where people like you, you zoom in and you zoom in, and, and every zoom in is another. It takes you to a. They have they do it on Instagram. They zoom in on like an iPad and it shows you a picture, and within that picture, when they zoom in, it's like a whole nother picture, a whole nother world. Mm-hmm. They zoom in again, it's another picture, another world. Like, it wasn't until recently I was like, that could be us. Like, yeah, we like, are um, creating life. We got the, 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 the genetic clone cows and, and, and pigs now. And that makes me think Horton of- here's a who. Yes. Mm. Yes. I'm or like, even, or, or even, who, yeah, Whoville is like inside of a snowflake. Right. And I also think of the Orion's end of- belt. Orion's, Orion's belt. belt. Mm-hmm. I was um thinking also at the end of Men in Black, you know how when they zoom mm. out and it's like a big giant alien playing marble with all the yes. different universes? Yes. We the marble. Yep. yep. Or in that locker. We in, we the, in locker. the locker. We in the locker. We a whole world Men in, in Black locker. wasn't fiction. Now, y'all heard about the UFOs? This Lately? Week? Yeah. It's been going this crazy. Week? This, yeah. This week what has been happened? going really? fair and be out of touch. I love I my baby. My baby be the on Super Instagram. The Super Bowl was a distraction. She... Wake up. My baby. <laughs> The my UFOs baby, are out. My baby look at, she look at cute dog, cutesy cute dog videos, <laughs> and then she look at love videos. But everything what? else, fam, flies right by her. The so, UFOs been out. They been out, can... out. So let me know. Bring me up to speed. Come on, I'm listening. But they're basically <laughs> just saying that- The government that... tried to silence me. Did y'all see the call? <laughs> 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 it came out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 They said, shut up, bitch. <laughs> they, they, I didn't read the full article because I was like, I don't have time for UFOs right now. I'm on vacation. <laughs> but like, they done shot down like in several different like states and shit. Like they've been shooting down UFOs mm-hmm. in like uncharted airspace, some shit like that. But the UFOs is UFOing. And it's some shit going down. <laughs> she said the UFOs is UFOing. Okay. I'm, I'm um, gonna say this last thing and then we, we move on back. This okay. is this was uh Eddie Griffin. I don't know how I missed this. He he basically broke down his theory on how the pyramids were made. Okay, so oh, I'm a, shit. yeah, this was crazy because he did it on stage and it was fire as hell. So up is down and down is up. Oh, um, yeah, what if you look crazy because down in the space standing up on earth, it was fire as hell. This is how we built the pyramids. The plan of sandbox is easy to move a mountain of sand into position. Once you wet sand, it holds its form like concrete. You put the first brick at the apex of this motherfucker, right? You move sand out of this corner and that corner and place bricks there on both sides all the way to the top. Now you let the sand dry out and drop that brick right through that bitch. Sand under pressure when it's dry moves like fluid. That's why you always find viaducts in all of the motherfucking pyramids so the sand can shoot the fuck out the bitch. Now you have a hollow column. <laughs> And it's built into the ground in the same specs. It's not really a pyramid. It's a diamond. 
It is now topped off by quartz, and at the bottom is topped off by quartz. When moonlight comes through, it refracts off of the quartz in the bottom, the first refracting laser, <laughs> illuminating the night sky, which is why they call Pharaoh God, because he can turn night into day. Thus, the all-seeing eye on your dollar bill above the pyramid. Because the only part of the human body made out of quartz is a human eye. When it dries out, it's small granules of quartz. That's why light transfers through it. Holla at your boy. Shit. Now, what? granted, I had to listen to that a couple times <laughs> right, to get I'm it. Like, Cause I was like, wait, I don't what? Think so I, his idea is that they they moved father. all the sand together and they made it in the shape of pyramid, and then they started to etch out and then put the bricks on there. So they basically built the pyramids out of sand, forming it, and then wetting it. And then wetting it made it like concrete. And then they shaved it out. And then they dropped something from the top after it was all wet and then dry and then hollowed out from the very top. Okay. And it's actually like a diamond shape because it... It, it, it goes underground. It goes underground. Mm -hmm. And when they dropped that brick in there or whatever the heavy thing was, when the, the sand shot out, that created the columns. And that's why every pyramid is different and they go down. Or the columns are so far below. They don't actually like start at the top. The top doesn't really have You're not anything. just gonna make no column just by dropping some shit. Well, the, no, well, so the hollow column is like, like it goes straight down. Not the whole thing is hollow. Not the whole quartz, the whole diamond shape is quartz. When you drop something from the top, it just mm. shoots straight down. And that's what made the column. It also allowed light in so they could see what they were doing when they were digging the tunnels through and making the tombs for the pyramids. Mm. I, I feel mean, like, like there's that... a lot of prerequisite information <laughs> in physics in to better understand that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me. Why is this? Just... Look at okay. you. I was trying to turn it off. It wouldn't let Look me hear it. Anyway, um, as far as like how wild it is, that's the closest I've. Not the closest. That's the most logical. Not the most logical, but that's definitely a logical theory. Theory for me. I'm gonna have to. Mm, I don't feel like I have. A I'll enough... go down one of my rabbit holes. Yeah. I like my uh, rabbit holes. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I have to say, regardless, the way he said it, I was like, everything he's saying is true. <laughs> right. He said it with so much confidence. He, right. The conviction. Like, he was sure about it. He was like, how do you not see this? And, and I'm like, you're like... right. How do I not see it? But also, I don't see it. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of it that hard. I was just like, aliens. I, and I, then, you just, you just pitched it off as of aliens? No, I don't think. I mean, black people mm, made it. And we just do amazing things. Mm -hmm. Black people, a little bit of aliens, mm -hmm. just a little, little bit, bit. Mm -hmm. little bit of aliens, a little bit, a little bit of aliens. Because there's no way y'all just got like the thing is that shit's lasted like thousands of years, thousands of years, mm -hmm. and they building houses just... in my neighborhood in three months. That don't <laughs> make no sense to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. even the Great Wall of China, they made these sh this shit out of bare minimum technology. Yeah, thousands Those of years, years ago, ago, and it's still it's here, still here. But let it rain too hard. And one of these new developments. Flooding. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And you're going to see it <laughs> slide Flo down the street. The but like, it also took crazy. generations to build those things, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like, your granddad's working on the same thing you was building. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. You sure hear about that. Usually like slaves, like, but still. My grandfather and my great-grandfather and great-great-grandfather <laughs> all works on this bridge. Just like, Let me no, tell you something. No. I am thankful I, I was born in the era I was born in because... Can you imagine trying to travel cross country horse and carriage? Like can you this the highway system alone. The fact you that you can drive like a spare tire? No, will? I thought I would guess they would. You would have to if you're doing long. You have But if it's one. just wood, I think that's an easier fix than a whole tire. Like if 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 you get like a spare but that, you can like to get in that round to get the circular shape though, you would need at least one spare with you. Because even if you yeah. try to fix it, you like hammer it in. Now you you doing up this the, every yeah. every yeah, rotation. I'd so mm. I just Man. I don't want anyone know anyone know heat in fucking carriages. No, I don't know how like musty they would be. Oh, big yeah. musty. Big, but big you know what? No, it wasn't heat, as hot also, as it is. No AC. Yeah, it wasn't as hot because the global warming is why it's so hot now. It may not have been that hot back then. Uh, it might not have been, but it was definitely cold. Uh, well, no, I cold think is it got pretty hot. cold. Is cold is pretty consistent, <laughs> and and and. Like I was watching, we were watching a hateful eight, and you see their breath in the thing, and they just got like a leather flap 
up to the window as oh, the yes. curtain. It's like, nigga, that's <laughs> all y'all that's the, got. The wooden door that they had to keep nailing oh, shut. I wouldn't is. have lasted a day in none of them old times. <laughs> me God either. knew putting me in 1994 it was the perfect decision <laughs> Yo, for him. Like, I, I would not. feel like I just. I would have just had Stone Age slavery. Got to the point where I'm like, age. this is enough, and yeah. just attack somebody and got myself killed, or just been like, you know what, I'm done. I'm I was gonna die. I, I went straight to the freaky shit and was like, they wouldn't use the condoms. Niggas could come straight out of like war armor <laughs> with the metal and all of that, and just throwing like all day dig. Like in a Game the of Thrones, Thrones and it would be, yes. it would go to the whorehouse. Yeah, I know it smelled crazy in there. You I do have remember to crazy? Yo, think about that that one episode where the uh, uh, the chick at the at the whorehouse she comes out and she got nut on her face. He wipes it off and she goes into another room and kiss this man right in the mouth. Kiss a different yeah. man right in the mouth. Yeah. I done some wild shit. That ain't one of them. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> that's so gross. But you know what? VD is relatively new too, though. Yeah, yeah. That's a that took a, a lot us. of evolution to get. I to think BD. if anything, so they, they was probably wilding. had crabs and shit back then. I'm sure they had they at least crabs. About, yeah, yeah really remember crabs. them talking about like having lice and shit on they on their balls. So yeah, that was. I had crabs sense. in high school. I ain't gonna hold you. <laughs> My dad said the same thing, and then he pulled them off by his hand, like by hand. He, he still had them there because you can't just pull them off. <laughs> He they, have, they are in multitude. <laughs> and you can't just shave it off because they lay babies all the time. So even if you shave it off, the eggs are still there. You had to get this shit called uh What is that? Lice that Nix, or Nix. Nix. Yeah. You I, know? I, no, nigga. I don't know <laughs> like that. <laughs> Friend, you had crabs too? <laughs> no. But it came with a look I know because I went to school with a lot of white people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was a thing. Like they used to actually do lice checks in our head. And oh, it wasn't even necessary. I used to get the free massage for my scalp. Because yeah. I'm like, you know, I ain't got no lice. I got fucking barrettes and ponytails. You know, I ain't got no lice. And, and right. it, was, it wasn't even like necessarily from, it was just like from towels because mm -hmm. we had a swim, we had a swim, we had, we had a big ass pool and all that type of shit. But like it was, it was a real thing. Yeah. I never would have thought I, as a black person, would have called crabs. Yep. But, but you did. did. But I did. But you did in your very crab ass face. <laughs> <laughs> did it hurt? Were they pinching? Nah, it was just itchy. <laughs> She's... It was just itchy. <laughs> Or crabs just lice on your pubes. Yeah, that's yeah. all it is. It's pubic oh, okay. lice. Yeah, it's pubic yeah. lice. That's okay, all it is. I'm like, I they make it seem like it's something so different. And it's like, you my had Sims got an crab lice. Kit. <laughs> Wait, Sims could get lice? I got a bunch of extra shit on my shit. I got, you got a, a lot bunch of mods. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and I didn't know he could get, I just had him wilding because he was in college. He was in dorms knocking down all the black girls in the dorm and he got fucking pubic lice. And I was like, not my dog. Your <laughs> Sims? Your Sims, the game Sims. Yo, the shit is really real. The kid plays it, and like she. I just... watch what she put on that game now, cause I got the nasty stuff. So she might have <laughs> access to the nasty stuff too, cause they say you got to be eighteen, but they don't check it for real. They don't, and it they get nasty. Mm -hmm. It's fun though. <laughs> it's fun. It's really? fun because they have autonomy. So like. I'll, I can tell them what to do, but like I could low key just press play and just let them do what they want to do the whole day, and they'll be fucking, they'll be doing all kinds of crazy shit, they'll start fighting. Like I, you can just let AI them do whatever. man is on the way. Wow. Sims it's is fun. I've been playing Sims since I was like six years what old. What if we Sims y'all back to the whole existential thing? <laughs> but Sims, Sims is basically yeah. playing God. Yeah. Wow, that's dope. Cause like, and then sometimes you don't feel like interjecting, and sometimes you do. Mm. Yeah, and if time is Time is you not out linear. Here being Zeus. Time is not linear, right? So slavery seemed like hella for the people in it, but slavery was God going to the kitchen and grabbing some water. He came back. Oh no 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 no! Oh, yeah! No! Ah, no! Ah, stop 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 stop! What are y'all doing? <laughs> oh fuck! I got. I would have to go back. He forgot to hit pause. Three fucking updates to <laughs> and change. He couldn't say. the way white people interact with black. You know what? Fuck! I'm just gonna have to let it play it out, and I'm gonna just see he other let, stuff in. You know, I don't even think he was that stressed out. It's like I mean. Let's see where it goes. Listen. <laughs> Let's see. He saw well, Beyonce. Like, he saw Beyonce uh, in 500 oh, years ago. We got to get to Beyonce. Space bar. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, uh, what a thing. Fuck. And that Let's was see. that was the flood. Let's see where that it was goes. Noah. It was like, <laughs> Fuck it. Let's just. <laughs> it's like, too soon to kill him again. I need like, uh, to find my name. It's too soon. 
Oh my God. I just went started. I already did an ice age. What can I do? What oh can I God. do? I'm inspired, but I wanted to wait till at least so, uh, 2200. It's mm-hmm. so funny. Um, so, here was asking me which cards I wanted to bring to the show today. Um, and I was like, oh, let's get, you know, let's use the extreme personal questions or let's use, um, I think I had the I- uh, icebreaker deck. Mm-hmm. And I was like, because all my other ones, I was like, seemed to be centered towards, and he was like, sex. And I was like, Okay. And I'm a Mel lady. is perfectly fine talking about sex. The first 27 <laughs> minutes of her 15 minute set is about dick. Like, <laughs> I, the way I approach talking about dick is in more of an observational <laughs> way. I talk about dick, but I'm not talking about like sucking it. I'm talking about there is a dick. <laughs> this is what the dick looks like. Not necessarily. Like, I'm not interact. I mean, I have interacted with said dick, uh-huh. but. Mm-hmm. This is the dick, mm-hmm. and it was cool. Mm-hmm. And it was cool. This is the dick, and it was cool. Um, I'm so about it. Eh, eh, I eh, pulled eh. out the tonight's conversation. Okay. This is the sexy sixty nine. No. Is the after dark question? Oh wow. Okay. So yeah, we're gonna get in your business just a little bit. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's get into it. Okay, that one wasn't meant to be. It fell on the floor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Oh, I we haven't had this one pulled before. Oh, look at her face. Um, Mel Mitchell, do you have a spot? Ooh. I and have... if so, okay. Because <laughs> I, I want all of it. Where is it? And tell me about the moment it was discovered. I have a spot oh, behind shit. my knee. This little mm. meat right here, this little brisket meat behind my knee. Brisket is one of my spots. And I did not know that until, you know, doing it. Mm-hmm. Missionary, legs up. And all was like, he touched it. And I kind of like, and he just started licking the back of my knee. I went insane. It was amazing. Really? It, it was just this little, the little tender meat, right? right little there. brisket meat. <laughs> just right here. <laughs> it's like a little coochie a little bit. <laughs> so she's like, oh, for real, you I got a lot of thighs, yo, so it's, you, it's real tender and like you soft, your, like a baby's body. You on your period, girl? Just put some lube right there and be Mm-mm. like, "Come on." Honestly, it's like See, a little. You bonus. always find a way to take it too far. How is that too far? Ain't nobody fucking the no back of the kneecap. Why not? Ain't nobody fucking it's the bottom of the kneecap. It's, it's a turn in for her. A turn on for her. Yeah, and but ain't nobody coming. Ain't nobody coming for nobody licking their ear. A turn on is a turn on. It gets you in the mood I'm to fuck. For anything. I stand corrected. Whatever. I stand corrected. Now we'll see, we'll see the back of the leg, but that's my new spot. And it's. <laughs> that's right. She said it. And is. again, maybe mine just has a little more distress and it's more <laughs> sensitive because I have so much meat back in my back of my leg. <laughs> Why you keep talking about your, your meat on your leg? Right here. Oh, she got some thick legs. See? It's it's heavy. Ooh. It's heavy. All Ooh. my meat is in my legs. I can't even wear gladiator sandals when it was hot. I couldn't wear no gladiator because oh, my yeah. legs was too big. I can't even the thigh high boots, they just come right about right here. I Bell can't. had bought some boots off of TikTok oh. when we were in oh. 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 <laughs> Or is it one of the Carolinas? Richmond? It was Richmond. Richmond. It was Virginia. <laughs> Don't buy no TikTok boots, y'all. And I and they got me because I'm like, oh, if you got big legs, buy these boots. I was like, perfect. I can finally get some thigh highs. But I should have got them in a the size bigger. First off, they were like SpongeBob plastic Barbie boots. <laughs> Stop, gross. They was they was they smelled like plastic, and they were too small. The foot part was too small. The leg part did fit, uh-huh. but it ran small. So I should have got like a. I got big feet. Should have yeah. got a ten. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And I got a nine. And my toes is balled up the entire mm-hmm. time. And trying to be on stage, like, that's why I wear, like, certain shoes all the time on stage because mm-hmm. they're comfortable. Right. Because yeah. when you stand it straight in one spot, that shit starts to hurt. Right. Oh, yeah. So I was, my feet were like this when I was on stage trying to tell my jokes. And I had to be oh. like, all right, y'all. Uh, <laughs> I told like, you just out and take them off? Or you, oh, no, no, no. Did I, you I, I couldn't keep them off because I got to go. I'm the host. So I like to hear do his 25. I got to come back out. <laughs> I got to introduce Kev. <laughs> Whatever. I would have been like, okay, my feet hurt and I ain't bring no extra I shoes. I thought about Can bringing I the go crops? barefoot? <laughs> this is my first tour. So I got to have a little bit of behavior about me. <laughs> Uh, Otherwise, yeah. I would have came out there and slide. Like, all right, fuck these boots, fuck y'all. Here's the next comedian. <laughs> so, but I had damn, to, I had not only somebody else. Mel, Mel, had, nev- about Mel who, had never hosted before, right? She was oh like, my God. "Let me tell y'all how Mel brought me out the very first time." Oh, it was so bad. Mel does her set, and she says, "All right, next up to hear more." And I'm standing there like, 
Nope. That's not it. I was like, like come on, we you? Know, I said the name. I said, mm. So I just went up. I uh, introduced myself on stage and we got all said, so this is this how you do this. So baby, <laughs> so you had to sit me now. I did, I, I mean, Yo. like, see, this this what I be trying to tell him. I'm awkward. Because when he be about to have a conversation that I know he's antsy about, I be like, okay, what are you going to say? <laughs> <laughs> What do you like? What do you What do you think you should say? Mm -hmm. And he'll tell me, and I'll be like, "All right." So remove like this tone. Sometimes, like if he's going to ask for help or something, he'll like sound real pleady, and I'll be like, "All right, mm -mm, no, mm -hmm. take the bed, got your voice." Yeah, she does. We role play. Yeah, Aww, like bless your heart. And That's this sweet. this is how you should say it. Yeah, it's the corporate in me too. It's like cut to the chase, and you don't mm. need all these extra trim details. The, trim the fat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I, I used to actually. I'm talking about this. It's the, it's the corporate in me. I used to actually get in trouble for that when I was corporate. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> They'd be like, hey, um, not can no you, that's all right. Can you like speak? Can you greet, please? <laughs> in your email, can you say hello? <laughs> Farron got a tone about her. Okay. Can you, even when even when Can even, you say good morning, friend? When she mm -mm, being nice. No, she don't. No. Can you can you no, hope all is nice. well before you start no. demanding things? We we've had I've had to accept that <sighs> that's just gonna be her tone, but she, she has a even when she was like, so, all right, so what we gonna eat? First of all, why the fuck you talking to me like this? <laughs> Why, why is down. you talking to me? She's it is because, it, like, even in that, it's like because I'm frustrated that I'm hungry. <laughs> or I'm frustrated that it's my job to think about it. I don't want to think about it right now. That's so it's like thing. everybody think about it. Well, we always gotta what are eat, we right? going to eat? All hands on deck. <laughs> Every day you got to eat, B. You putting shit in you that you just going to shit out. Hey, And okay. then rinse and repeat and you just keep on doing mm -hmm. it till you die. One day I got a frustrated and depressed thinking about I got to buy toilet tissue for the rest of my life. <laughs> But like he did, you had he had a whole conversation about it. I did. I was, I was like, we like, gotta yo. buy this shit for the rest of our life. We don't do nothing but wipe our ass with it. Mm. And then Flush I bought it. the bidets. <laughs> Still gotta buy that toilet tissue. There's you a know. bidet yeah. in my Airbnb, mm -hmm. and it was just so strong. And I was just like, my booty a little sore now. <laughs> you can't no, it turn it down. It was on the lowest, really? and I'm like, this is intense. Okay, no, no. it can't. It, it yeah, definitely. It my, can I had to, I had to adjust how I was doing it because I was doing it trying to get all too. the corners. <laughs> Like all, I was trying to hit all the things, so I just got to like wipe up with the wipe and then drive with the with the tissue paper. And I had it gone for too long. Your booty hole sister. So here's but yeah, and I'm not trying to butt stuff, but that was a lot corners. for me. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I had to, I had to, I had to dial it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I had to dial it back because I had so, mine, I had mine set on um uh, uh like racial injustice. Like mine uh, was set like a fire hose <laughs> initially. You I had it on Black Sunday. Sunday. I, told, I, I, I would turn, I would turn on a bidet and I would hear German shepherds bark, barking. I will hear. <laughs> Sit down, boy. Sir. <laughs> uh, nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> I fucking hate you. So, uh, um, Mel, you talking about uh, the <laughs> official break from from? Did you say little boy or this boy? That boy. That, that boy. boy. She has a trademark. That when she, boy. When she puts it in a text message to us, she puts the TM next to that boy because she's trademarked <laughs> that boy. <laughs> Mel is an entire fool. <laughs> that boy, I, I changed it to his name in my phone too. Oh, my that God. boy Trey Bar. <laughs> yeah, that boy. <laughs> but um, so in in a relationship because I follow, I was somebody recommended that I follow um this account called High Value Queens. Oh. And I already know the female going. Kevin Samuels. <laughs> How, do you you have to watch my podcast skit. Okay. It's basically mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. okay. And um, she frustrates me from time to time, but I do find her views interesting. Mm -hmm. With that being said, who, how do you handle the start of a relationship? That conversation, as in what context? What do you mean? Like you're you're dating. You're ready to get serious. Whose job is it to? Have that conversation of what are we doing? How are we? Where um, are we going? So I know niggas hate that conversation. Absolutely. <laughs> what are what, we doing? What, are oh, we? what is this? Gotta... Oh, <laughs> so with me, I'm pretty straightforward, and I think because I'm a comedian or just that I'm funny in general, I can kind of get away with a lot of shit that people won't be comfortable doing because I can just like oh, I'm just being funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with us, I think so. We met on Twitter. We met on Twitter, and so we we only like Facetime and text for like three months before we even met in person. Mm -hmm. We met in person and immediately clicked and immediately just light bulbs went off in our head. So mm -hmm. like that weekend he came to see me 
in um Atlanta. We hung out. It was it was mid pandemic, so it wasn't really much for us to do, but we still had fun. Well, it was Atlanta, everything was open, but like much for us to comfortably do. It was plenty to do, but we weren't doing it. Um, uh-huh. we just went to like we went to this like burger spot, and I had a show that weekend, and we went bowling, and you know just small stuff. Then we had dinner that Saturday before he went home, and I was just like, so. Mm-hmm. When am I going to see you again? Because I like this. I'm having a great time. You know, I want to take this next step. Um, he was like, no, me too. And he was like, you know, you can come to Detroit. Mind you, it's like dead winter. Mm-hmm. And that was like the confirmation. And they ain't care for you offering you to come to Detroit, I'll be honest with you. Huh? What'd you say? <laughs> so the nigga ain't care about you. I was about to, to say, to that was, I would have been like, oh, so you hate me. <laughs> I mean, that's where he lives. So God, it, it just... <laughs> Come see me. Yeah. But it was just those like those small confirming moments mm-hmm. that we we both had mm-hmm. to know that like, okay, this is this person is great. And mm-hmm. we were on the same page. That's what made it easy. But I've been on like, well, I don't know. It's like I've had conversations with some dudes like, hey, be my girlfriend. I was like, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> or like I had some situation where a dude didn't wish me happy birthday and he was like, Well, you're not my girl. I was like, so, so now I'm not your girl. So I was over at your house and you got, I got snacks at your house, but I'm not your girl. We went to Chipotle and we went to Walmart at night and I'm not your girl. So it's I got like, half a drawer and I'm not your girl. <laughs> Literally, I got, I got some slides over there and I'm not your girl. Really? Uh, uh, <laughs> That's undergrad mail. I'm changed. Undergrad mail. <laughs> so we was in the library and people saw us, but I'm not your girl. Like, <laughs> in public. Wow. That's People crazy. saw us at Chipotle, and you paid. <laughs> People saw us. That's a whole the difference. Ass the parameters thing. for being somebody's girl in undergrad was just so different. But you could really be doing all the the movements of a relationship. Mm-hmm. And, oh, but you're not my girl. Mm-hmm. You forgot my birthday. That was very devastating for me at that time. Yeah, but like like this person was like not American, so they went home and like their mom made like some sort of traditional de- meals or dishes, mm-hmm. or whatever, and he mm-hmm. brought me some. But you're not my girl. I'm not your girl. Mm. <laughs> we go. Like, what that's traditional. About? That's right. traditional. Like, but yeah. So I've been on every side of that spectrum. But mm-hmm. when it when y'all are on the same page, that's what makes it easier. Right. Mm-hmm. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So yeah, I um just keep reading these things. You know about don't don't make him a a priority when you're an option. Fair. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. And that. it's like yes, I I get that. But it's also this whole like. It, whose job is it to be clear and to start that conversation on clarity? And it seems like it's always the woman's job to wait for the man to start the conversation and just keep trying to guide him into starting the conversation. I think we're both adults and we can right. both have the conversation. Now, I'm not going... Like, for a man, a man ain't going to do nothing he don't want to do. So, like, mm-hmm. like when women propose, I'd be like, get your ass up. Because <laughs> <laughs> if he wanted to propose to, he wouldn't have. Get up. It is a stigma. <laughs> Let me say this. It is a stigma. I'm on the fence Surrounding about marriage when it comes to men that we are giving up all our freedom, all our independence, all right. our fun, all yeah. our dreams, all our goals, all of that. So a lot of men, when hearing that or hearing about marriage are not excited about it. We're excited yeah. about meeting somebody that we can spend the rest of our lives with. But saying yes, dear... Or, or or something to that, to that yeah, yeah, something to that that tone mm-hmm. is not exciting. So a guy is never going to do that because a relationship gets us one step closer to that. I am at my best when I like you. When <laughs> I like you and I'm looking forward to seeing you, we just having a good ass time. Oh, we having so much fucking fun. When I love you, I'm much more emotionally involved. I'm most more emotionally invested. It's work. And I know right after love comes, I'm going to want to marry you. And then I start thinking about all the stuff my uncle, <laughs> dad, granddad, all they, other everything they used big to brothers, say. all that shit went through and all the stuff that they said. And now it makes it weird for guys because we don't know. We don't see. Yeah. We don't see enough of the Kevin on stages. We don't not see enough of, of me and Farron because that's two different. That's night and day mm-hmm. with that. And... It's not highlighted because the negative is always highlighted. The news negative. doesn't report on all the positivity that goes on in the neighborhood. It the only man. reports on the negativity. Mm-hmm. And so I when think, that's all yeah. you see, then that's what you expect. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, two things. One, it's kind of like monetizing your hobbies. Like, I like playing The Sims. Mm-hmm. But once I started streaming and now Sims is like work, it's not fun no more. Mm-hmm. So like that's kind of what it's like for me yeah. in that POV. Yeah. Oh, and then also like pe- that. people don't have OGs. That's true. So like, 
And I think that's the real problem. Like the generation before us wasn't really married. It's a lot of single mothers, a lot of mass incarceration, or mm-hmm. you know, men just not wanting to be active fathers or whatever. So it created so many broken homes. And that people don't know what marriage looks like. So now they're looking for the Kevin Samuels of the world to tell them what marriage is. Or they're looking for randoms on YouTube. Or they read in the news. Like, see, this is what marriage is. So they don't have, like, positive mm-hmm. examples. Like, if I have a, a marriage question, I ask my mama. Because mm-hmm. she was married even before my dad passed. They were married for 28 years. Mm. So, like, you know marriage. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, I can ask my mama. I don't got to go to call Kevin Samuels the, the god or whatever. Yeah. Because I have an actual human who I've, who I've witnessed That's in marriage accessible. and can and wow. it was accessible and had a successful till death do us part is how it's supposed to work and that's what it was so like I can have that and that's a privilege I have and what yes. I don't or try, which is why I can look at internet like y'all are insane <laughs> <laughs> like y'all have never seen two people love each other or like at least at least because by the time my parents had me they were married for 13 years they was like I'm, I'm by the time I started paying attention they were like 20 years in, they didn't really give a fuck for real. Yeah. Like, they were like, here, <laughs> we married, love you, love these kids. More importantly, we we locked in. Mm-hmm. This is what it is. They weren't like, that's why I kind of like the Cosby show. Fuck Bill Cosby. Like, I like the Cosby show because yeah. the devil tried to take my voice again. You heard it. <laughs> 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 because they were like, lovey dovey. My parents weren't like, lovey dovey, but yeah. like, they were locked in. I never seen that my dad disrespecting my mom or any of us. Like, it was perfect, right? Mm-hmm. But I can say that a lot of people cannot, or even yes. people who, and honestly, like having two parents together is not the end all be all either because right. some people's no. parents should have been broke up and stayed Ooh. for the kids. And now yeah. all you know about marriage is toxic, yelling, yeah, arguing, yeah, yeah. fighting, yeah. arguing, yeah. Yeah. all of yeah. that. So it's just like, it's. Yeah. Because we. For the kids. Yeah. I feel like neither one of us really had anyone older than us, some OGs, to reach out to. To to ask those questions yeah. and get that clarity, and we surely didn't have much um, of a model. He had more stable model than I had, um, but yeah, I did not because I? I never see Ellen. My mom, uh, your mom, were together for. Uh, yeah, I guess so. A bajillion years. Yeah, they never got married or anything, right. but they were together but for still, a long time. You still I had had Big Ray a and Tolene, but they were like Uber. They were uber, uber religious. religious. And yes. I was like, well, I, I ain't going to be that. Not I, I knew I wanted to be way nastier. Super christian yeah. out there. Yeah, but, so. um, yeah, I didn't have that. Like, I pretty much never saw my mom in a relationship. So mm-hmm. I never went to her oh, for Val relationship fucking. advice. <laughs> that was never fucking. went to her for um, relationship advice. Mm-hmm. Um, it just was wasn't a thing. So it was bothering. like, you know, if she was... <laughs> You good? Like I keep on seeing in the corner of my eye, like, hey. And it's, like, <laughs> it's this one little piece of hair that I keep on, like, turn around. Right. It's I got it now. You got it. Okay. No, it's still, it's still a little I'm bit like that. My, you see it? See, that's the thing with kinky straight, because it's like nigga hair. So it just be doing. <laughs> It blend nice, but it be nigging up. <laughs> I be nigging up. Niggas gonna nick. <laughs> that's what you can bet. Niggas gonna nick. Yeah, I hate you a little bit, Mel. And that's my way of saying I love you. <laughs> Mel, that warmed my heart. <laughs> this is the thing. Mel would fit in our group out here because she a so fool. So would. I'm like, why don't you live here? So when are yeah. you moving? Soon. You know? <laughs> uh, here's the thing, though. Mel, Mel did, you know, <laughs> what people do sometimes. She she got she got in good. She, the stuff started popping. She was like, I'm out of this job. And I was like, hey. Make sure you got you got a, you got a couple other things set. Not necessarily a plan to be, but a couple other things set up. Because even I fell victim to it. I got comfortable to it with Kel. Mm-hmm. And I toured last year on my own tour. I did the 10 Cities. Mm-hmm. But you got enough going on with their, the streaming and your, your, your brand deals Influencer, and stuff like that. Yeah, the brand and, deals are keeping the lights on. Yeah, mm-hmm. but a lot of people would, uh, would up and move, planning on some stuff. But like Kev didn't tour last year. In 2022, he didn't tour at all last year. So if it wasn't for my brand deals, if it wasn't for YouTube, if it wasn't for my own tour, I would have been asked out. out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of people do that. Like, you can't get comfortable uh, depending on another person to feed you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or getting yeah. comfortable with a person feeding you. That's what's so funny, because the weekend I turned around two weeks, he's like, yeah. Kev was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to cancel these shows. I said, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> I just quit these people's job. But it, I just it was quit ta- these people's job. <laughs> it was time for me to go, and I had a good job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really did. Mm-hmm. But it was time for me to go, and I couldn't keep on doing both. And that's yeah. because mm-hmm. it was the, the physical that yeah. it was weighing on me. Like, I would wake up 3 o'clock in the morning, fly to Pittsburgh, wherever the fuck we was going to be at for the weekend. Mm-hmm. When we, as soon as we land, I'm on, you see me, yeah. in, on, on the, in the sprinter, like, yeah. I couldn't keep, I couldn't rest when I got there. And then we do the whole weekend, five shows, wake up two o'clock in the morning on, on Monday, yeah. fly back in. I can't rest when I get home. I got to get, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I couldn't keep doing that. Yeah. But God God was like, you're going to be all right, baby. Because I and before I sent it in, I was like, I won't do it. I went to the um the Best Man premiere. I got invited to the Best Man premiere. Mm-hmm. I she said, met Morris Chestnut, guys. She got a picture. Ooh. She shows it to the audience. She gives her you, phone to the fucking did you audience. Kiss her? And lets the, I wish. Let the audience <laughs> I hand dropped it to everybody in there. And um, <laughs> y'all gonna see this goddamn picture. But no, the thing is, before I went, I said, God, now I'm, I'm supposed to, I talked to my manager. We already planned it. I was gonna mm-hmm. formally send the email, but I was like, now, if I don't need to be doing this tomorrow, let me know. Give me a sign tonight mm-hmm. that what I'm doing is the right decision. I met Morris Chestnut that night. I um me doing these little dumbass videos. It's like, like I'm silly. I'm scaring the hoes because you come on my page thinking I'm a baddie, and then I'm in a ball filter. It's like weird, <laughs> but like it's it's doing what I needed to do because uh-huh. because I made a best man video last year because it was like I did the Avengers, I did the Harry Potter, but the boys like do nigga movies real quick, <laughs> see what happened. So Malcolm B. Lee, the the writer and director of the film, followed me. Mm-hmm. So he interacts with me. He knows who I am. So when I went to the party, I DM'd him like, Hey, I see you there. And he was like, oh, young lady, we got to get a picture at the end of the night. I'm like, you want a picture with me? <laughs> like, stuff like that. I, I met Morris because I made that viral tweet in 2020, yeah. which is how I even got connected with you the first time. Yeah. Because I was just made a random... My power on in the internet is insane. <laughs> but made a thirst tweet, went to bed, woke up, Morris Chestnut was trending. I was just like, they don't make niggas as fine no more. They're not at Publix. They're not at brunch. They're not here. They're not there. Mm-hmm. They just not. Woke up the next morning, it's viral. It's on every Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything. Wow. Morris replied to me and followed me. I, articles were being written. I was like, what the fuck? So wow. that was like, I'm showing a screenshot to his public. It's like, hey, I made this tweet that kind of like gave him new life in the 2020s, like in his career. Because uh-huh. honestly, after that, he started doing interviews. He got new shows. He did this. He did that. So I'm like, hey, this was me. <laughs> I just want a picture. And mm-hmm. when I met him, he was like, no, we got to connect. Um, like t- He told my public, he's like, Connect with her. I want to work with her. Blah blah blah. So God, when I got in the car, I was just like, <gasps> Man. I would cry because Listen. that was the confirmation that I'm gonna be okay and quit that dog- doggone job. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. I was supposed to go to Talladega University, another HBCU, Alabama. Talladega is where they do NASCAR. It's a big, big racetrack. I went down there. They had did a, a um. Like a not an open casting, but like they just did an open recruitment in East St. Louis, random as hell. My mom made me go. I met the guy. He was like, "Yeah, we're gonna get you some money. You gonna come down here during the summer." This is after I found out my son wasn't my son, right? So this is a year after I graduated high school. I'm supposed to go down there. I was gonna leave that summer to do some summer courses to get caught up. I was gonna do enough classes so I got caught up from like missing that first year. My sister's dad, bless his heart. Took me down there. We checked out the university, everything. We drove and all that stuff. All right, cool. We're going to do it. I'm still not feeling great about it, but I'm going to do it because I feel like I'm supposed to go to college, right? Right. Pack up my little car, do everything. I pray before I head down there. I said, God, if this ain't for me, let me know, right? Mm-hmm. Just give me a sign. I'm driving down there, and my, my, my stepdad, my mom's boyfriend that passed away, he was like, take your speakers out so you can put a real tire in because if you catch a flat tire, you don't want to be driving cross country on a spare. So I took my speakers out, put a rear tire in, driving, boom, catch a flat tire. Wouldn't you know it? Wow. Right? I'm jacking the car up. The uh. car fucking falls, right? It bends the jack a little bit, but I can still work it. So I try to jack it up again. This time the car falls and it bends, it twists the jack. Because it was one of the ones that like folded out to a diamond. Because this real man jack. knows how to change a tire. Oh, yeah. We're not going to ignore <laughs> that. The jack right. twists and breaks. Uh, I'm sitting there waiting, not even five minutes. Highway patrol pulls up. I'm terrified because I'm from a city where cops kill niggas. Mm, right? right? So I just get out the car and get on my knees. He's like, what are you doing? Get up. <laughs> get up. Changes the tire for me. I don't have to do anything. Wow, that's good. I get in the car, bust a U-turn, and go straight home. Now, had I gone to Talladega University... I'm sure I would have still been successful. I don't know if I would have ended up in but, L.A. or when I did end up in mm-hmm. L.A. I don't know if it would have been on the timeline. But I wouldn't have met her. Mm. We wouldn't have this podcast. Mel wouldn't be on the podcast right, right now. Wow. I went harder after the kid and her moved out here to L.A. I had a different type of tenacity that put me in this spot right now. So, wow. so many things may not have transpired had I not had that influence and that interaction with God, and had I not prayed for it. 
Wow. You gotta listen. listen. God did. God, God did. <laughs> I like that. You listen, gonna fuck around and make me listen did. to the whole album hey. today. And I, I honestly never listened to it because like his album started losing me, the DJ Khaled albums. Once yeah. the song started getting older, I didn't yeah. care no more. <laughs> but <laughs> The Grammy, the Grammy performance, it was Ass. funny because he was like, God did. Yeah. I don't want to hear him talk. Be. Yeah. God mm-hmm. be doing. He do what yeah. he doing. God be God. God be God. <laughs> God be God. And you just ask for a sign and it'd be funny. Yep. But like, he'd really be like, all right, I yeah, got a yeah. sign for you. That was pretty much how my move out here happened too. Because it was like, okay, I'm going to set four things to, to move. We decided that we would just start getting the ball rolling as if it's meant to be. Then it won't be resistance. Like, is, yeah. is everything's going to flow together? When I tell you, I hadn't been in my apartment for not even three months yet. I'm letting them know, like, yo, I need to break the lease. I'm moving in three months, and yeah. she's like, oh wow, you have somewhere better to go. Go ahead, we'll let you out of it, no problem. And she gave me my deposit back. That's a blessing. Right. The <laughs> the place that I had left previously, I should not have gotten my deposit back. And um, because I was there for a year, but I had a a, a dog there that I, that shouldn't that have should been have. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so um they but they gave me my my deposit back. And I'm like, shit, money just coming from all these different places that I did not expect. Like, I just wanted out of the lease. I didn't expect my deposit back. I wasn't looking for a cash out. Um, And then my job, a job I had left before, somebody from there, from HR, called me and was like, yo, you left um, some funds sitting with the municipal retirement fund, and that's only going to help you if you come back to work for the city. So if you're not ever planning on coming back to work for the city, then you get your money because it's not going to do anything but just sit. And I was like, I'm on my way, like to where I got a sign, hand it here. <laughs> so all money these on things, top of money on top yes, of money. Even our apartment. Yes. When I moved back home, when I came back because I I went to St. Louis to do a project, I came back. I told my roommate at the time, I was like, "Yo, I think she's gonna move out here. Uh, we're gonna try to make mm-hmm. things work." I told my landlord at the time. And keep in mind, I'm black. My 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 roommate is Filipino, but I'm the one that's paying rent on time. No disrespect to my roommate because he was he got it. He just he would forget to send it in. I pay the rent on time every time, right? My once I told my my landlord I'm moving, you know, my lady in with our kid. He was like, oh no, I don't know her. And he made us leave. He made us leave. I was like, I can pay rent up. This keep in mind, this is April. I was like, I can pay rent up to the end of the year. He's like, yeah, by law, I can't take that much money from you. So he made me leave, which forced us to move to where we moved, which was an area I had never even looked at or thought of. It had Blue Ribbon schools. The schools were in walking distance for the kid. Everything just worked out for the move Everything like it was supposed to. Mm. She moved out June 2nd. Yeah. Proposed July 27th. Married March 17th. Yep. Boom, boom, but, boom. Yeah, it wow. was just that 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 moment of like, if this is, if this is for me, yep. then it's... I'm going to get a sign, like something, because I'm all about signs. You know me. Like, he'll be pissed because traffic or we running late or something. I'm like, you don't know what accident was that waiting for missed, you. Baby. Like, just calm down, play some music, relax. <laughs> but, um, yeah, before we get out of here, though, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. It was so much fun. Yes. And um, tell the peoples where to find you. Um, okay, so I am It's Mel Mitch on Instagram, and then I am The Baddest Mitch on basically everything else, TikTok, Twitter, all the things, um, because that white girl would not let me have her name, so I had to have different names on things, so I'm so sorry to be so unorganized like that. Uh, but yeah, and then my podcast is Jokes on You Pod, that's, um, again, I, mm-hmm. I, since y'all got on me, I've been, we've been every week since then. Um, but we're trying to get it to the point where we can start getting money from it. Yeah. Because we only like cracking like two thousand per episode and mm-hmm. we need to get to ten before we can make some money. We yeah. Like, yeah. may talk to you offline about that. Cause well, yeah. I, I'm when trying you get to get to ten, I got I got yeah. the hookup for you. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get to ten thousand. So y'all please listen to my podcast, Jokes on You Pod, me and another comedian tally out of Atlanta. So we just, you know, be on there just talking shit and just having a good time. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. This is yes. great. Of course, um, of course, of course. Perfect. Thanks for coming. Um, yes, this has been uh, another great episode. More to the story. Thank you, more Ma Patreon for tuning yes, thanks, in Ma. live with us and keeping the comments going. So appreciate you. 
for those who are not in the more mob, what the fuck you waiting for? <laughs> get more I mob. am Farron Moore. I'm to hear more. See you next week. Peace, guys. <laughs>